Hello again and welcome back to my computer vision channel. Today we'll talk about self-supervised learning for image models with Lightly Train. And here's the plan for today. So we'll talk about what is SSL pre-training, self-supervised pre-training. Uh, we will look at an example of a data set of X-ray security images. Uh, then we'll actually discuss what is Lightly Train, what is Lightly SSL. So we'll pre-train a YOLO model using Lightly Train and then fine-tune it on our data set for object detection with Ultralytics. And then we'll discuss the results. So the term of self-supervised pre-training really comes from this Dino paper from uh, 2021 from Facebook research. And the idea really comes from the LLM world. So as we know, LLMs train to predict next token. And it has been shown that this sort of task is much better for pre-training than, for example, classification. So here is an example of classification of movie reviews, where you need to say if this comment movie review is positive or not. And if we just solve classification task, the model might, might end up just spotting some uh, words that give away like the overall tone of the comment, like this loved here, the worst here, and then basically short circuit itself, and only look at that and ignore everything else. Uh, so what we do in LLMs is we say that no, you actually need to look at every token and try to carefully predict what comes next. And this makes the model learn much more information from the same text because now you actually need to understand like what is going on here, why is it written that way. Similarly for image classification, uh, if we take ImageNet dataset for example, we would just see a picture of a person and we need to classify to the person. And again, the model might sort of get short-circuited just looking at the head, for example, which probably is enough to understand that this is a picture of a person. So what we want in self-supervised pre-training is to teach the model to build some sort of robust image representation that will pay attention to every detail that is happening here in the image. Uh, so I will not dive too deep into how exactly that is done. So in the original Dino paper, they had a student model and a teacher model, and the teacher model is basically this averaged out delayed version of the student model. Uh, and then they take uh, an image and apply different crops and augmentation to that. And then they ask the model, the student and teacher model to build a representation for these different versions, different augmentations of the same picture. Then on top of that, they do a classification hat into a bogus 65K different classes. So they don't have to correspond to anything to ImageNet classes, they are just uh, imaginary, but solving this imaginary classification task, they make sure that student and teacher model output the same probability predictions for the two pictures, which ensures that we actually build robust representation for uh, both of the models. And so the pros of that is that there are no labels required, and as they argue in the paper, we actually extract more signal per single image, so it should be really effective. Uh, another thing that they quote is emergent properties. So in here, we can see that if, if you train not just any model, but VIT, Visual Transformer, you actually get segmentation masks from attention of the transformer, which is not something we've given in the labels, uh, which is quite cool. Not the case for us. We are going to just train a simple YOLO model, but still it is good to know. So I've chosen this uh, PidRay security data set as an example because it has a really interesting format of images. So it's X-ray. This is not something that you would meet in ImageNet uh, data set. So uh, all the backbones pre-trained on ImageNet will probably be useless on that one. Um, you probably might find something similar in VAT, which just trained on a lot of pictures from the internet but still this sort of format is quite rare. So it's a good way to demonstrate that if you don't have a lot of labeled data, SSL pre-training can help you. So here I have this data set downloaded. So it has annotations, which is just a file with all the labels, uh, train and test pictures. Um, we can see how they look like. So. This is not the common format. This is not the same format as Ultralytics. 
So when we will fine tune the model, uh, it actually had to write a conversion script that will convert images and labels in the proper format. But for SSL pre-training, we don't really care about that uh, because we only need images. And so uh, let me show you how easy it is to train something on that. So Lightly, you might have heard about Lightly from this Lightly SSL repo, which is a collection of open source techniques to train self-supervised learning models. And Lightly Train is their new platform specifically for pre-training models with SSL. And here is an example script that does that. Uh, you might notice that it is rather short. Uh, it actually looks quite similar to Ultralytix. So you just say lightlytrain.train, provide a bunch of arguments, and it just does everything else. Uh, so one thing I want to note in particular is that the only thing you need to install here is Lightly Train, which is really easy. You just do pip install Lightly Train, and that's it. So compared to that, actually, the Speedray dataset has their own implementation of a solution, uh, which uses MM detection. And um, I've tried for a couple of days to actually make that work. Uh, even though the repo is just two years old, they use, for example, old Torch version 1.10, old NumPy version, old MMCV version, and I don't have sudo on my machine with GPU, and I have up-to-date NVIDIA drivers, and it turned out to be a really, really painful process to try to install outdated versions of all these libraries uh, that were probably compiled against old CUDA version to install that without sudo on a machine with newer CUDA version. So it's just a hell. And uh, with Lightly Train, you just do pip install. So kudos to Lightly. So uh, as a model, I have to pass in uh, either a Ultralytics model. So yolo11n.pt is a pre-trained Ultralytics model that's pre-trained on Coco. I can just say yellow 11 nyaml to take original model without pre-training. Uh, then the data just points to uh, a folder with images. So it will recursively scan that folder for images and just use all of them for trading, which is quite convenient. No matter what sort of data set format you have, it will work. Uh, just pay attention to actually only um, use the images from the train subset. All the rest stuff is pretty standard. Uh, the only thing that I've actually added here is this 1db logging, because I like to observe what is going on. I have a node with a bunch of GPUs, so let me show you the NVIDIA SMI. So I have eight GPUs in total, and I can just launch this pre-training script with just bare Python. So under the hood, as we shall see, Lightly uses Torch Lightning, so when it starts, it will first scan the actual dataset folder and look for all the images and tell me how many images there are. Uh, then it initializes 1db. Uh, it automatically, so thanks to Torch Lightning, it automatically discovers that I actually have eight GPUs. So it will start eight different processes uh, that will train my model in parallel on all the GPUs that I have. Now, in theory, that should also work with Slurm, although I tried it to launch it with Slurm and couldn't get it to work that quickly. So we shall see. Uh, up here, we can also see what sort of parameters there are. So this is just the YOLO model, and it starts to train. So while it is training, let me show you 1DB of one of the launches that I did before. So it prints out a lot of stuff like global step, learning rate scheduling, all that stuff. We can see the train loss. Um, I'm not exactly sure how to interpret train loss in the case of self-supervised training, um, but at least you can see that uh, something weird happened here at the start, and then it's not quite saturated yet, so maybe it's worth trying to train it further. Uh, in here, it actually shows me what augmentations and different crops were used. So this basically tells us uh, which exact images were passed to students and teacher models, um, which gives us a little insight into what actual augmentations are being used. So in here, we can also see what sort of layers uh, or modules it has. So embedding model is like the, the, the actual model that we're interested in. And then we have this 
a student and teacher variant and a special dino projection head which does this extra classification um, on top of our meeting model that is only used in SSL and then when we export the model we just export the main thing uh, so that we can use it for fine-tuning so the training of this test run on 10 epochs is done uh, and I can see what sort of stuff got exported so I've saved my model to out SSL1 uh, so it has a bunch of intermediate checkpoints tensorboard files and the main one here is exported models slash exported last.pt. So let me show you now how to use that to fine tune your YOLO model uh, on the actual object detection task with Ultralatex. So as I said before, now that we do uh, object detection, we need the proper labels and the format of this data set is not the same as uh, is typical for Ultralytics, so I actually had to write the conversion script. So I'll leave the link to GitHub with uh, with the script, with the results in the description. Uh, and this is the fine-tuning script. So this one only uses Ultralytics. You can see that it is also quite short. So we just use uh, load the model, um, point to the data. Uh, so the data might refer to something like coco.yaml, which is like the known data set, and it'll just download it for you or it can point to the actual location on your computer uh, with a special YAML file that just tells uh, Ultralytics where to expect the images, how many classes there are, and so on and so forth. Um, and we train the model. So you can see that by default, it uses YOLO11nano.pt, which is a pre-trained checkpoint from Ultralytics themselves uh, that was pre-trained on Coco. Uh, and we can uh, override that with our own model that we've just exported, that we've seen, which is also in .pt format. And so I just paste this command to actually do the fine tuning and on it goes. So one thing I've noticed is that Ultralytics does not actually use all eight GPUs, unfortunately. So you probably need to do something for it to be able to do that, uh, which is a shame. Uh, here it prints out all the layers as well, so all the convolutions that you have uh, and even the arguments, so you, you can understand like what sort of sizes are being passed around and so on. And this is how it looks like during training, during fine-tuning. So uh, it prints out some intermediate results as well, so you can understand what's going on better. So this is what I could get after experimenting a little bit on this PDRAY dataset. So the train set of PDRAY has 76k total images, but only 29k out of them are labeled. Uh, nevertheless, it actually took me a while to beat a simple baseline of this uh, YOLO model that was pre-trained on COCO and then fine-tuned on PDRAY. So everything you see on the slide was eventually fine-tuned uh, on labels on PDRAY. And so this one is just default COCO YOLO. This one is COCO that is then fine-tuned on SSL for 10 epochs. This one is um, just randomly initialized YOLO and then fine-tuned with SSL. And this one is COCO plus SSL plus 100 epochs. So you can see that there's actually somewhat of a bump if we uh, take SSL pre-trained model that was pre-trained for only 10 epochs as compared to just default COCO. So uh, my explanation for this is that default COCO model actually knows how to do object detection. So it has all the weights initialized for outputting uh, bounding boxes. And when you do SSL pre-training, you improve the basic representation, but you spoil these bounding box predictions a little bit. Uh, and nevertheless, after training for 100 epochs, I've managed to squeeze some profit out of this. Um, so I'm pretty sure we can get it even further. If I had more time, I'd actually be curious to compare what I can achieve uh, as compared to just PDRAY benchmarks that they have on their own GitHub repo. Um, if we look at Lightly Train uh, website, they also say that the best results you usually get when you use, uh, when your data actually has much more unlabeled images than labeled. So they uh, provide some benchmarks 
where they fine-tune the model only on 10% on the Coco train set, but then uh, pre-train using SSL on the full Coco train set. And you can see that uh, it beats uh, the SSL pre-training beats, uh, for example, ImageNet supervised model uh, by quite a significant ma margin in this case. So thank you for your attention and see you soon.